My beloved Elizabeth, I miss you so. It is June and I have arrived here at the southern end of a lake that the French call Lac du Saint Sacrement. It is so beautiful here. I am under the command of General Johnson and I am one of 2200 soldiers. I feel quite safe. The French control the territories north of here and we have a treaty with a nation of natives called the Iroquois. The encampment is like a small village full of laughter from the children of the colonist. I wish you could see this new land. How do I describe it to you? I know. Elizabeth, when I look into the lake, I see the depth of your eyes. When I look to the sky, I see the brightness of your smile. When I look into the black of the night, I see the darkness of your hair. And when I stand close to the fire, I feel the warmth of your love. I hope, my darling Elizabeth, that through my words, you can see the beauty that lies within my heart for you. I miss you. I love you. Your Frederick. Elizabeth, it is now near the end of July and it seems so long since I've last seen your smile. I am still amazed at the beauty of this vast land the encampment is full of the sounds of drummers practicing, and I truly enjoy the fife players playing. General Johnson has named the fort after the two grandsons of King George II. It will be forever known as Fort William Henry, a strong name for a strong fortress. We continue to carve out a home here in the wilderness, and we are but 15 miles north of Fort Edward in case we are attacked and need reinforcements. The work is hard and I am tired most of the time. But this new land will serve England well. It is full of natural resources and wild game for the taking. I quite often wonder if you and I might settle here someday. I miss you, my darling. I hope you are well. I have yet to receive your letters, but I am sure that they are on their way. I must get some rest now, for tomorrow brings another day full of hard work and adventure. I love you. Your Frederick. Elizabeth, it is so quiet here. It is August 2nd. The French have taken us by surprise. They have surrounded us and cut off our contact with Fort Edward. We are all alone. We have sent out several runners with messages for help, but I do not believe that they have gotten through. The fort is strong. We have been forced to retreat from our positions outside to inside the fort. The French are working their way closer and closer with their cannons. It appears as though there may be as many as 10,000 French against our 2,200. It has been four days straight of battle now, and our fort is slowly being eaten away by the cannon fire and mortars. I do not know how long we will be able to hold out. I am not able to fight now, Elizabeth. A part of the fort structure collapsed on me, breaking my arm, so I am unable to hold my weapon. I have to admit that I am scared of what is to come. 
It has been six days now. There isn't much hope for us. Their General Montcalm has offered our Colonel Monroe safe passage to Fort Edward. For those of us who are left, I think he will accept their terms. Elizabeth, we have surrendered the fort to the French, and we will shortly be leaving. They have told us that we must leave all of our weapons. A detail of French soldiers shall escort us to Fort Edward. It is only fifteen miles, but it will be a hard trail. I am able to walk, but because of my injuries I may be coming home to you. How I hope for that. It is time to leave, my darling. I will write you when we reach Fort Edward. I love you, Elizabeth. Your Frederick. Thank you.